Hi there, dear listener. Lazlo here with a quick pre-roll message for you. Before we get started, I want to let you know there are all kinds of convenient ways for you to support my efforts to bring you all these podcast shows on Chinese history, Chinese sayings, and tea history. If you go to my website at teacup.media and click the support button at the top, you'll find a bunch of ways to show some appreciation. There's Patreon, where you can get early access to new episodes, exclusive content, and an invite to the Teacup Media Discord channel, and more. CHP Premium, it also has early access, exclusive episodes, and ad-free versions of the entire CHP back catalog. Plus, there's several other ways to donate to the show as well. Check the episode show notes for a link to that very page. And my deepest thanks for listening and supporting me and my humble efforts. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Chinese Sayings Podcast. Laszlo Montgomery here, as promised, with more Lin Xiangru, Fu Jing Qing Zui this time. Another classic from the Warring States period, 475 to 221 BCE, or thereabouts. No one ever agrees on that start date. As I mentioned last episode, there were two rather well-known Chengyu that are attributed to Lin Xiangru. Last week, we heard the story about how Lin Xiangru returned the whole jade back to Zhao. Wan Bi Gui Zhao. So let's take a look this time at another classic tale from those good old Zhou Dynasty days, Fu Jing Qing Zui. Let's break it down to its constituent parts. First character, Fu, to carry something on your back or shoulder or to bear a burden or responsibility, among many other meanings, of course. Jing that's a kind of a tree, but it's short for jing ji, which means thorns or brambles. Fu jing, thorns or brambles carried on the back. Okay, not sure what that means, but let's keep going. Qing means to request or to ask. And zui means a crime or guilt. Fu jing, qing zui, carry thorns, request crime. Well, just like last episode, if you're not hip to the stories of Lin Xiangru, I doubt you'll guess what these four syllables add up to. As usual, we have to go back to that great repository of Chengyu, the records of the grand historian, the Shi Ji, Sima Qian. In the chapter titled Lian Po Lin Xiangru Lie Zhuan, the biography of Lian Po and Lin Xiangru, there is this story. Like last time, the story also takes place during the time of the pugnacious King Zhaoxiang of Qin. As I mentioned before, he was a serious warrior king, and under his rule, well, the Qin state emerged as the most powerful of the remaining warring states left over from the Zhou dynasty. As you recall, Lin Xiangru was from the neighboring state of Zhao, with its capital at present-day Handan in Hebei. Qin was, at this time, in the process of taking Zhao down. The two states have been going at it for a while, and it's all going to end at Changping in 260 BCE with the destruction of the Zhao army and the victory of Qin. All covered in a previous China History Podcast episode, uh, CHP 157, I believe. But that hadn't happened yet, and Zhao was still hanging tough. We saw how earlier in 283 BCE, Lin Xiangru rescued the precious He Shi Bi from the wily and capricious King Zhao Xiang of Qin. And then we ended last episode with Lin Xiangru cashing in big time on his achievement, and he soon found himself elevated to the post of chief minister. <laughs> this really made Lin Xiangru a major guy in the Zhao government. Prior to all this, the most celebrated man in Zhao was the great military leader, Lian Po. Now, seeing Lin Xiangru get all this attention was hurtful to Lian Po's pride. And amongst his closest comrades, when they'd be out drinking and carousing, he'd say he was going to get that Lin Xiangru if it's the last thing he did. He swore whenever he could, he'd go out of his way to try and make Lin lose face, and he'd try to diminish him whenever he had the opportunity. Anyone who's been to Disneyland knows it's a small world, and word got back to Lin Xiangru that Lian Po had planned a long-term protracted war of passive aggression against him. And Lian Po was true to his word. You know, there's nothing big, but one after the other, these public 
incidents would go down. Lian Po would say something or do something, and Lin Xiangru each time swallowed his pride or backed off or said nothing. You know, people were beginning to wonder, dang, Lin Xiangru, where's your spine? Not to mention your face. And Lian Po was feeling good because people saw how he was showing Lin Xiangru who was the better of the two, despite Lin Xiangru's meteoric rise to the top of the civil government. One day, there was this incident. At a very narrow road, Lin Xiangru's carriage encountered Lian Po's carriage coming from the opposite direction. And it was one of those things where one of them had to back up or else they'd be there all day. You know, there were all these ancient and well-worn rules about, you know, order and relationship. And according to these traditions, Lian Po, top military guy though he was, was still one rung under Lin Xiangru's ranking on the political pecking order. So Lian Po should have backed up, but he stood his ground. So Lin Xiangru, senior in rank though he was, gave the order for his driver to back up and let Lian Po get by. And a lot of people were standing around, and of course they saw what happened, and people talked as people do. And one by one, Lin Xiangru's clients and allies began to leave him, and his closest friends appealed to him, asking why he was exhibiting so much weakness in the face of Lian Po's blatant disrespect. And Lin Xiangru replied that these matters between himself and Lian Po were personal and didn't concern the state. He continued, Zhao was under imminent threat from Qin, and at this dark hour, solidarity needed to be maintained. And so for the sake of keeping peace within Zhao and not causing any political disturbances, he gave Lian Po a wide berth and didn't make any waves. Well, when someone brought this info to Lian Po, and after he had fulminated about it for a while, Lian Po privately bowed his head in shame, and with a sigh, realized how small and petty he had been, putting his own feelings of pride and self-pity before the welfare of the Zhao state. All along, while he was out and about, thinking <laughs> what a great man he was compared to Lin Xiangru, it was Lin Xiangru who was actually the more noble of the two. So ashamed of himself was Lian Po, and so filled with remorse was he, that to show his sincerity and demonstrate his deepest humility along with his apology, Lian Po cut down a bunch of thorny brambles and he tied them all up and strapped the branches to his back. And he proceeded to Lin Xiangru's residence. And with every step he walked towards Lin Xiangru's, the thorny branches tied to his back scratched his skin. And uh, by the time he arrived at Lin's door, his back was a bloody mess. And Lin Xiangru, of course, he got the message and was moved by Lian Po's sincerity and his unreserved apology and show of contrition. So they talked it over and, well, happy ending. For the rest of their days, these two remained good friends. So we can see from this story that the general Lian Po, he, Fu Jing, carried brambles and thorns on his back. And then when he faced Lin Xiangru, he... Qing Zui admitted his guilt or sought a penalty for his crime. He carried these nasty thorny branches on his back, a kind of self-flagellation, to show his remorse and then beg for forgiveness from Lin Xiangru. So when you really were being a cad or made a big deal about something that you were in the wrong about, this one's for you. Fu Jing Qing Zui. I'm not saying you should go out and flagellate yourself like Lian Po, but sometimes when you really go the extra mile to be a jerk, or that other word that starts with A, remember the deeds of Lian Po, who felt he had to go as far as to Fu Jing Qing Zui in order to make things right. This is reserved for those times when you need to go beyond the call of duty to show remorse for your actions. Fu Jing Qing Zui. Okay, friends and countrymen, that is all there is to say about that one this time. I hope you enjoyed our little two-part series featuring the hero from the warring state of Zhao, Mr. Lin Xiangru. Laszlo Montgomery here, signing off from scorching hot Los Angeles, California. Consider joining me next time, won't you? Pretty much every seven days for another informative, useful, and historic episode of the Chinese Sayings Podcast.